this current situation. I think this is unprecedented for humans and it's unprecedented for the animals as well. Our wildlife has many, many thousands of years of being cautious about humans and staying away. So it would be unlikely that they would change their habits in a few weeks or even a few months. But I do think they will start gradually to explore. I think coyotes are hard to predict. They're really sensitive and they really don't want to run into you. So they may get more bold in their hunting. Um, I think you may see more raccoons out during the day um, and that will freak people out. It always does. Everyone thinks, oh, it's a rabid raccoon because it's out during the day. No, it's just trying to get food. That's all. Um, so uh, I think it may change the times of day that they may forage and it may change the range over which they forage. So they may, in, they may not be so shy about going across a fence or going across a road or coming off of a corridor that they know is safe. Car traffic is the one thing that keeps raccoons in a territory. So they won't cross major roads because if they do, they get killed. And I can tell you, I've measured many, many dead raccoons who've been hit by cars. 68, that's a male too. One thing that's dropped dramatically in the cities is the car traffic. And when you remove that predator, those cars, then you're going to see a lot more movement in raccoons, I think. So they're going to increase their territory size. They're going to explore new areas, especially since there won't be the same dumpsters full of food behind the restaurants that perhaps there may have been previously. So they're going to go out on the hunt and they're going to cross those roads and they're going to end up meeting other raccoons who were already there. So in my mind, in my imagination, it's like a little West Side story with the raccoons coming across Blue Ore and meeting the other raccoons. And, you know, it's really a big musical number, but I don't think in real life it's going to be like that. Probably you'll just end up hearing a lot more raccoons fighting in your backyard because they will be coming onto each other's territory and fighting over who gets to stay. But it's important to note, like my colleagues and I have studied animals in Africa that have been using well-worn paths for hundreds of years. And when the environment changes, they continue to use those paths, even though they don't have to, because it's it's better safe than sorry. You, it's better to use the places you know are safe than to be go somewhere new and be killed. So there will be some animals who continue to do the things they've always done. And then I would suspect some young ones from, you know, that are born this year, in a strange year like this, they may say, hey, this is great. We can go everywhere. Um, and they may be in trouble when society moves back to having cars and people and everything goes back the way it was before. I, I think if people are seeing wild animals out, and especially during the day when they're not expecting them to be out there, treat them just the way you would any other human. Just use physical distancing. I would suggest probably more than two meters um, and just back up and let them go on their way. But I always tell people, here's my tip for raccoons. Raccoons do not like onions. I have learned this. So if you want to keep raccoons away from something, cut an onion in half and just rub it on a surface. And they do not like the smell of the onions. Everybody says use hot pepper. I don't like that. It gets in their eyes. It's not very good for them. It's painful. But an onion is super cheap and they just wrinkle up their little noses and they'll find some other place. So go to your neighbors. So that's the idea. Just send them to your neighbors, put, it, put onion all around the place and they'll go next door.